Welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? Psalms 33, verse 4, the A clause, which says the word of the Lord is right. Happy New Year. This is the first, uh, the Bible says this, what say you, of 2018. I'm so glad that God has allowed us to live and blessed us to see a brand new year. And I pray that the year is going well for you. I pray that 2017 was a blessed year for you. And I'll tell you, God's going to do some awesome things in 2018. And I'm excited about the things that the Lord is doing already and the things that God is going to do. I, I am honored for you to join me. And I tell you what, uh, we have much to be excited about. As you know, 2017 was declared the year of honoring God. First Samuel chapter 2, verse uh, 30, where God said, he that honor me, I will honor, but him that uh, despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And so we honored the God of the Bible all throughout 2017, and we will continue to honor him. But the God of the Bible has given me a theme for 2018. And if you've been following the ministry, you know what it is by now. Uh, taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 16, the 16th verse that says, The law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. That is, the kingdom is preached, and when men hear the message of the kingdom and they see the value of the message, they trample into it. They respond to the message. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm prophesying to you, I'm making a prediction that in 2018, there will be forces out there who will try to uh, cause biblical Christianity to look bad, there will be attacks on our faith. There will be people who uh, will try to treat our faith with uh, a, a derision, with disrespect. There will be those who will attack biblical Christianity from various uh, uh, areas. But there will also be those, and I pray that you are in this group, I'm going to be in this group, who view Christian, biblical Christianity for what it is. The most powerful thing on earth, it is God speaking to us. It is God's love letter to the human race. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, because the world was already condemned, but that the world through him might be saved praise the lord but you got to respond to it correctly and you got to see the value of the word of god and the move of god you know before john preached the kingdom the old testament prophets preached the kingdom as a futuristic thing but when john preached the kingdom john declared that the kingdom is at hand Study Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3. You will see that John preached and his message was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is, the kingdom of heaven is here. And the Bible declares that the kingdom of heaven would not come with outward observations like a political party, but that the kingdom of heaven shall be within you. The point of the message is that Jesus Christ would come and set up a kingdom in the heart of every believer. The, 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 uh, the Greek word for kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God, the terms are interchangeable. They both mean the same thing. The Greek word is the word bezalia. And it is that spiritual kingdom that the Lord sets up in our hearts when we get saved and give our hearts to Jesus Christ. When we hear the message of the kingdom and we learn that in the kingdom, good things happen. That when you live that kingdom life, powerful things happen. Uh, Je Jesus Christ sent a message to John the Baptist concerning kingdom activity. When John sent uh, uh, hit some of his disciples to talk to Jesus. John was in jail and he was discouraged and he said to, uh, to his men, go ask Jesus if he's the one that should come 
or should we look for another? Well, the Lord answered this way. He said, go and, and, sh and show John these things. Tell John, this is Matthew's gospel, chapter 11 and verse 5, how the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them, and tell him, blessed uh, is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me. Hey, John, don't get offended. I know that things aren't going the way you want them to go right now, but believe me, yes, I'm the one that should come and no, you shouldn't look for another. And sir, Jesus was saying to John, your message of the kingdom, the kingdom has exploded. Blind eyes are being opened. Deaf ears are being unstopped. Lame people are walking. Good things are happening. The dead are being raised. Well, there are Christians out there who see biblical Christianity for what it is. You see it as the awesome move of God in the earth that it is. And I want to encourage you to continue to stand on the word of the Lord, continue to work in your church. Yeah, celebrate, celebrate your church. I'm not with the crowd. I'm not a part of the crowd who preach against the church and preach against, you know, all we got, all we talk about is how you've been hurt in the church. There's no hurt like church hurt and the church this and the church that. And, and the, the problem with Christians is this, is this and the Christian problem of Christians are that. Let me tell you something. Christianity is the answer. Among the people who built the first hospital, hospitals were the Christians. Christians have contributed. Biblical Christianity has contributed and continue to make the greatest contributions to, to sanity on this earth. Wait until we're taken out of the earth. Be here after the rapture and you're going to see some things and you're going to wish to God that you had, a God, had left with the Christians because it is the presence of the kingdom of, the, of God, the kingdom of Christ in this earth that, that, that keeps back the insanity. And, and even with our presence, look at what is happening in the world today. We got men who think that they're women. We got women who think that they're men. We redefine the definition of marriage. Many preachers have stopped preaching. Many church goers have turned their back on the things of God. Uh, the, 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 there are those who actually campaign and they endorse the murder of the unborn. And they call it a, a woman's right to choose. And, and yet uh, p babies are being slaughtered in this country. That's despite our efforts. Can you imagine what this, this country and the world will be like when the Christians are taken away? You got the, the tax on the foolish that is called the lottery and all these things that are going on. And yet there are those who are preaching the cross, who are declaring that Jesus is Lord. Now I'm running out of time, but I want to I I tell you what the Bible says. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 2, well, verse 3 says this, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. To scoff is to debate. To scoff is to jeer. To scoff is to, to treat with contempt. It is to scorn. Well, there will be those who will scoff at our great faith, who will talk about how wicked men uh, use Christianity to, to enslave people, how Christianity was used to bring blacks into slavery. Christianity is the white man's religion. Christianity, no, no, no. Christianity is the answer. Christianity is the way. There have been, there have been men who are, who are psychologists and psychiatrists who abuse their uh, uh, disciplines. But, but you don't put the whole discipline down. There have, been, there have been people who, there have been abusers and wicked folk in every sphere uh, of society. And yet, we don't, we don't paint with a broad brush all of them. And sometimes when one person who claims to know the Lord, does something silly in the name of the Lord. We try to uh, attach their wicked, godless, immoral behavior to the faith. And, and many, what's sad is, many so-called believers fall for the trick. Believers don't let the scoffers 
fool you. The scoffers have been predicted in Scripture. The Bible says this in the book of Jude, verse 17. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles, before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should come mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These mockers, to mock is to make fun of, to mock is to deride, to mock is to treat with burlesque. That is to take this great faith and make it, uh, 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 treat it with satire, make it satirical and, and to make a parody or a caricature out of those who are part of biblical Christianity. You know, look at how the world, uh, how, how Hollywood in their shows treat the preacher. He's, if, if, he's, if, he's a, if he's a white minister, uh, he's the murder in, in this, murderer in the city or he's killing somebody. If he's the black minister, he can't get enough of fried chicken and he's always joking and saying something silly. And, uh, and all of the things that we apply to the, the minister as the world treats with uh, burlesque and, and satire the minister of the gospel. And sure, there are ministers who have fallen short. But let me tell you, that, that's a small minority of ministers when you look at all of those who are standing on God's word and who are preaching the truth. I just wanted to come to you today and to warn you, do not be fooled by the scoffers and the mockers. Don't get caught up in some of these movements. Hey, I've been awake for a long time. I've been awake. I woke up when Jesus saved me back in 1977, and my eyes have been open ever since. So all of these little little movements that come up, you give them six months uh, at, 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 at the most, and, and they're gone. But biblical Christianity will continue to march on, and I'll tell you, I'm not falling for the devil's tricks. I, I say to all those who come with different religions, different doctrines, whatever the latest flavor of the month is, go talk to someone who's vulnerable. There's no point in trying to sell me on these things because you know something, saints? I, I, I study this book, and I've had an experience. I've had an undeniable experience with the Lord that has given me a testimony. An undeniable experience in the past, the late great Bishop Otis Lockett said, that affects our presence and our future. The Lord Jesus laid his hands on me. He saved me, and he saved you. And I want to tell you, do not fall into the crowd of those, you know, it's popular now to put Christianity down, and it's popular now to make fun of the church and all that stuff. Don't go with that. Become a presser. Press your way in. See the value of this. Know that you are fortunate to be saved. Know that it is a marvelous thing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, I feel the power. Now. I feel like speaking in tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a marvelous thing to be sanctified and living right and standing on the Lord's side. I'm glad that I worship in a church where we still clap our hands. I'm glad that we still dance and praise the Lord. I'm glad that we teach, but yes, we rah, rah, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and we cast out devils in his name. Oh, glory to God. And people are saved and we have communion and we have feet washing and we have water baptism and we believe in the faith and we are celebrated part of the church of God in Christ. I'm glad that I'm in holiness. You know, the Bible says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I'm glad that I'm on the Lord's side. I'd rather be with Jesus than to be with anyone else. I don't envy movie stars, athletes, or anyone else. I'm glad to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. So, 2018 is going to be our year. We are going to press our way. We're going to love the Lord and serve the Lord. If you're not in a good church, go find you a good fired up church to get in and serve God with gladness. And when you come in, come in ready to hear from the Lord. Now, my friends, Happy New Year again to you. The Bible says this. What say you?